After I published this video on Twitter, someone asked me if this worked like Cinema 4D's blend mode inside a cloner. Indeed, it does. The same principle applies here, only that MoGraph is set up in a way that hides most of the inner workings, exposing only some of the parameters to the user. In geometry nodes, on the other hand, we have to build almost everything from scratch, but as long as you know how the principle works, that shouldn't be that difficult. We will make a simple version of the scene first and keep adding more complex components to it. Let's get started. A blend shape, more commonly known as morph, is nothing more than a gradual shift of the points of a geometric shape between two poses. Let's build a simple morphing example. Start with a curved circle that has a resolution of 8. Add a star shape with four points, an inner radius of 0 and an outer radius of 1. A morph is a change in position, so we'll use the set position node. We will mix the points positions of the circle with the positions from the star shape and for that we will use the mix RGB node. Colors are four-dimensional vectors, so this node will work fine with any kind of three-dimensional vector. Feed the position field into the first input. The position node in this particular instance returns the points position of the geometry that is directly linked to the set position node, the curved circle. To get the position of the star shape, we cannot use the position node in the same way because we're dealing with another geometry, but we can use a transfer attribute node to generate a list of position vectors from this one. It will extract any kind of attributes from the source geometry based on three criteria. Nearest face interpolated, nearest face and the index. Because our shapes have the same number of points, the index is the correct choice. The attribute to transfer is position, so change the type to vector. Connect the star node geometry output to the source input and feed the position field to the attribute input. In this case, the position node returns a list of position vectors for the geometry linked to the source input of the transfer attribute node. Leave the index input unlinked. In this case, both geometry index numbers match, so we don't need to bother connecting anything there. Now feed the attribute output to the second color input and also the color output to the position input of the set position node. Drag the factor slider and watch proudly the result of shape blending. Now let's make this prettier. Increase the resolution for the circle. Choose a number that is a multiple of 4. 32 will make it smooth enough. The points number won't match that of the star and will get weird results when trying to mix their positions, so we have to resample the star curve to the same count. Now let's multiply the circles. Add a mesh line. Change the mode to end points. Lower the count number and distance the end points part. We'll instance our geometry to the points of the line. In Cinema 4D terms, that's our cloner. Add another mesh line, this time with a single point. To visualize it easier, convert it from mesh to point cloud. Increase the point radius. This point will act as the effector, whose influence will blend the circles into stars. Let's animate it so it slides back and forth along the x-axis. Use a time input node and connect the frame output to a map range node. Map our scene's frame start and frame end range to a range from negative 8 to 8. Shorten the length of the scene and hit play. The movement range 
covers the length of the mesh line we just copied our circles over. We'll use the distance of the effector to the position of the cloner's points as the falloff for the blending of shapes. So, add a geometry proximity node and connect our point cloud to the source input. Change the mode to points. The distance output will be the basis for the falloff value. Now we have the distance, but how does it help us to animate the morphing splines? Let's stop and think about it for a moment. Right now, whatever value we feed to the mixing factor, all instances will morph the same amount. Instances are just clones. They are great to save memory because they share the same geometry. But there is only a limited number of operations you can do with them. Move, rotate, scale them, change colors or simply switch them. You cannot manipulate their geometry independently. If you try, you will affect them all the same. So the blending can't happen here, but after the instances are generated and positioned in place. We will convert the instances into real geometry with the Realize Instance node. Now we have as many circles as there are template points in the mesh line. This is how it will work out. We will store the information we need into attributes before the instancing and then use those attributes to calculate everything after we realize the instances. The normal way of doing it would be using the capture attribute node. It lets you store custom attributes for each element of the source geometry points, faces, curves, instances and so on and returns the custom attribute as a field or a list rather for further manipulation. Until recently this was the only way to propagate attributes from the source geometry to the instanced copies but in Blender 3.3 Alpha they have added named attribute nodes as well which in my opinion help you work more clearly. They also allow you to store an attribute to which you can give a name directly into the point, face or instance. Later on you can call those attributes by names and perform all kinds of calculations on them. Let's try it. Add a store name attribute node, feed it the mesh line geometry and leave the domain to points. Connect the distance field from the geometry proximity node into the value input. We'll name this attribute mix because it will mix between position vectors. Connect this node to the group output and have a look at the spreadsheet. Scroll horizontally through the data until you see the mix data column. This proves that the attributes are indeed embedded into the instances and propagated onto the geometry points. Let's continue by storing the position of the mesh line points as an attribute. We'll name this attribute anchor and change its type to vector. Remember these nodes store attributes and don't disturb the geometry flow, so you can chain them together. Now let's store both circle and star points position into separate vector attributes. They will serve as poses for our morphing. Name this attributes Pose0 and Pose1. This is all the information we need to calculate the position of each curve point for the morphing to take place. Add a Set Position node. Use the Named Attribute node from the input menu to read the attributes we already stored. Use a different node for Pose0 Pose 1 and Mix Fields. Add a Mix RGB node. Connect Pose 0 and Pose 1 to the first and second input and the Mix attribute as the mixing factor. Hit Play. We only see one circle in the middle. That's because Pose 0 and Pose 1 store the positions of the circle and star points before the instancing, when they were centered. If we add the anchor vector attribute to the resulting output, they should jump into place. 
Now we have prepared the core of the working setup. From here on, it's easy to turn this simple looking scene into the one you saw at the beginning. I've gone ahead and imported the group node we prepared during my previous tutorial, a honeycomb pattern generator, and we'll use it to replace our mesh line. To better see what we're doing, momentarily connect the instance on points to the group output. Increase the radius until the circle just barely overlap. Now switch the focus to our animated effector. Instead of animating it in a straight line, we'll make it move in a circle. Let's edit the map range output values, set the to min value to zero, and in the to max input field type hashtag two times two times pi. This means that during the course of the scene length, the effector will have completed two full circles. Insert a math sign node, duplicate it by hitting Shift D to keep the connections, change the operation to cosine, and connect the output into the Y input. This makes the point rotate on the XY plane. Now use a vector math node to scale the radius of the circle. Not much seems to happen, because the effector moves around, but we have set no falloff. Insert a map range node after the geometry proximity and adjust the from min to from max range. I'll go with 5 to 10. You may need to switch pose 0 and pose 1. Adjust the scene length and tweak any parameter you like. I guess you can now see how I move forward from here. I created a second pose where the star looks like an X and also added a second effector to blend the circle shape into it. This video went on longer than I expected so let me thank you for watching until the end and if you liked it, please share the knowledge.